evening to you. Glad to see you there. Y'all doing okay? All right. I just got a little shower outside. It's talking to Brother Weaver, talking about rain, how folks will start, if it rains, they won't come. I said, hey, if they even forecast rain, some folks won't come. He didn't even got to rain, just forecast it and folks won't come. I can't go to church, it might rain. But, but instead of going to church, we're going to go to the ball game and <laughs> we're going to go fishing. I went fishing one time with a guy named John Wood over at the Adams Run Baptist Church. And uh, we got down to Edisto River. And I'm telling you what's the truth. It was raining and raining and raining. And I, we was having to bail water out of the boat. I said, Brother John, don't you think you want to go to the hill? He said, no. I said, man. He said, your hide don't leak, does it? Your hide don't leak. I said, no. He said, fish on, preacher, fish on. But it didn't take but one bolt of lightning to light him up real good. That lightning hit, hit close by. He said, I think we better head to the hill now, preacher. But anyway, all right. Praise the Lord. And uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for another wonderful Sunday. And here we are again in the house of God with God's people, uh, your people. And we're glad to be here. We pray, Lord, your will will be done in everything that goes on. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Number 42 in your songbook, let's all stand and sing. Number 42. this evening amen while you remain standing let's turn over to page 105 105 we'll sing the first second and last of rescue the perishing amen first second and last Save 
Yes, Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Aren't you glad of that? I sure am. All right. Don't have many announcements to make. Most of them are in the bulletin. But uh, remind you once again to be sure to get your uh, uh, the latest edition of the Sword of the Lord on your way out today if you didn't get one this morning. And, uh, and it's good reading. When you get through with it, don't throw it away. Uh, you share it with somebody, take it somewhere, leave it somewhere. And uh, somebody may pick it up and read it and you never know what may happen. That'd be a great big track, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Sword of the Lord would be. All right. Well, anyway, uh, we got some things coming up uh, uh, in the weeks ahead. Of course, we've got Father's Day next on just on the horizon. In a couple of weeks, we'll be uh, voting on our Christian Man of the Year. I trust you'll be praying about that. And as you consider that, make sure the man you have in mind is faithful in church. I mean, Sunday school and, and it tries to be in church unless they're providentially hindered. And uh, so st stuff of that matter, okay? Uh all right, and then, of course, we have a, we're having a youth rally over in July, Bible school, the last Monday, starts the last Monday of July, and that sounds like a long ways off, but it's not. It'll be coming going before you know it, okay? And, uh, but anyway, I pray that you'll write these folks down. I uh, think not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we have our church supper. I'm looking forward to that. Always looking forward to eating. How about you? I was uh, in town yesterday and picking up some stuff. Went by and bought me a watermelon. It was a hypocrite, stinking low-down hypocrite. I cut that thing today and it wasn't ripe. Yeah, so I'm carrying it back tomorrow. Ain't, yes, sir, I'm carrying it back. You know what I'm going to do? I'm carrying my knife with me. We're going to cut it right there in the store. If we have to cut 15 watermelons, we're going to get one that's ripe. Y'all say amen. The ought not sell watermelons not ripe. Amen. Huh? I won't be a bad example, Brother Tommy. I'm carrying my knife with me, though. I put the fear of God in him. <laughs> Man's got a knife called security. <laughs> well, anyway. Oh, all right. Well, we got some good singing. I, well, I say good singing, lots of singing, and there ain't no such thing as bad singing unless George sings. George, where's George ain't here? We can talk bad about him. He did one Sunday say he had a special he wanted to sing. The George is souped up bass. I mean, he gets way down. But he said, Lord gave him a song. He felt like he needed to sing it on Sunday night. I said, all right, George, come sing the song. He picked out a real easy song, The Old Rugged Cross, which is not easy. He never did sing that song. He started singing. About five words into it, he started crying. He cried through the whole song. <laughs> best, it's the best rendition of that song I've ever heard in my life. George crying through it. <laughs> Amen. Hi, choir. Y'all sing and cry.
That's a great message, isn't it? He did it all for you and I. Okay, let's stand up once again and speak to each other for a few moments. Say hello. Good having Brother Darrell Weaver with us tonight. He and his wife are here, and and appreciate them being with us. He called and said, "Brother Becker, I got an opening. Could you could you use me?" I said, "Oh, Brother Darrell, we can use you all right." And uh, he was over at the Victory Baptist Church this morning and had a good service over there. And uh, he's going to come right now and sing a few songs for us. Amen. And uh, after he gets through singing, our ladies are going to sing, and then we'll receive the offering tonight. But I uh, appreciate Brother, Brother Darrell. He's uh, been a good friend of mine. I don't know how many years now. What, about, uh, about six months? I know the Statue of Liberty was a little girl when we first met. The Statue of Liberty was a little girl when we met, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Come on up here, preacher, and get you. Oh, you're going to do a piano song? One piano. Okay, a piano. I'll tell you what, I'm just so happy to be here. You know, I looked at my calendar, and it's really hard to believe. It's been a year. January a year since I was here last. And, you know, when Cody was here preaching. I yeah, yeah, that's right, right, January. And so it's just been a, it's just, but I never cease to pray for you. I promise you that. Hey, Amen. Make sure that mic's on over, okay? Okay, I will. Hey, make sure it's on. And, and the reason it's sort of a short notice on coming here, I, uh, Brother Alfred, sent, Alfred Willis had seen me a few months ago back in March and said, when are you going to come back? And be with Lance at the prison again, and of course be with them in the church. And so I called Brother Lance Neal, and we got, you know, this weekend set up. But Brother Alfred forgot about it, and he had booked something else. And so uh -huh. he realized the other day, I said, Don't worry about it. He said, Are you coming to sing for us? I said, No, I'm just going to check with my, you know, my brethren there in Walter. Okay. So we'll get together another time. All right. You know how these senior citizens are, they forget. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know this. Alfred told me he didn't like it at all. That's probably why he did it. <laughs> no, Alfred loves you. Amen. Sing. And, and I got that on. And I just left a Jewish conference. I lead their music and I preach one of their services. And, uh, man, we had a power. Do y'all know, I guess, I'm sure some of you know, preacher knows, but this past Monday was Israel's 70th birthday. And... Uh, they're the only nation in the world that's had two births. <laughs> As the Savior, whoops, Savior was walking up Calvary's hill, the birds hushed their singing, the leaves stood still. The flowers 
in the field bowed their lovely head as the Savior to Calvary they led tell me why tell me why did Jesus die on Calvary tell me why did he suffer such agony for God so loved this world he gave his only son that is why Jesus died on Calvary they put nails in his hands they pierced his precious side the pain the pain was so deep tears filled his eyes but he spoke not a word till the last breath he drew he prayed Father forgive them they know not what they do tell me why He suffered such agony. For God so loved this world, He gave His only Son. That is why Jesus died for you and me. That is why Jesus died for you. And me Amen, 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 Amen. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. I was filling the gaps again. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy once in a while. <laughs> Oh, if we would just live what we sing, we'd be oh, better off. That's right. exactly right. Yeah. We'd live what we sing. That'd yeah. be good, preacher. We'd make a difference. Amen. I forgot my second song. What was I going to do? I wrote it down. Oh, yeah. I, I know. I know. <clears throat> I really, <laughs> when I got to the piano, I started, I really didn't mean to sing that song. <laughs> it, was, it was a song in the same key, but I got mixed up, and that's just the way senior citizens do. <laughs> hey. Oh, here's one though. There's a land where death can never enter. No lonely grave on the hills of God. I'll walk by waters clear and peaceful where wicked men have never trod. On the sunny banks of sweet deliverance, happy freedom land, my immortal home. I'm going there to live when life here is o'er. On the sunny banks of my home, sweet home. <laughs> There's a valley green. Where the warm winds whisper, the master smiles on his children there. All sorrow gone, our burdens lifted for God himself. Gonna wipe the tears all away on the sunny banks of sweet deliverance. Happy freedom land, my immortal home. To live with life here is for the sunny pains of my home sweet home. 
on the sunny banks of my home, sweet home. <laughs> That's good, preacher. Amen, amen. Praise God. I heard Billy Kelly sing that song. It didn't sound nothing like that. What was that again? I said, I heard Billy Kelly sing that song. It wasn't nothing like that. Well, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Old Billy Kelly, son, he, he's something else. All right. Well, we got our ladies who are going to come and sing right now. So, ladies, come on and uh, sing that special. Amen. Here they come. All right. Y'all need to hurry up now. <laughs> Come on, Miss Alice. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. I give them a hard time, but they know I love them. I know I give them a hard time. I know you do Y'all need to get close to that pulpit now so the microphone will pick up. Get closer. Get closer. Get closer.
I'm going to tell you what, now, that was superb. Praise God. Y'all got to sing more often. Powerful song. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm telling you what the truth as a phrase that just jumped out and just blessed me in that course of that song. And, you, and that phrase that says, with joy, I'll carry on. Amen. Now, it's easy to sing that and say that when things are going real good. But when things are going sideways in your life and you have a lot of heartache, with joy, I'll carry on. With joy. What joy? I said, joy I preached on this morning. That's one of the benefits that we preached on this morning, the joy of the Lord. And how even the worst of times, you can have the joy of Jesus in your heart and your life, and you can carry on until then. Amen, amen. All right, well, we're going to uh, receive tonight's other's offering, and, and uh, we're going to give it to Brother Weaver and his wife. Pray it'll be a blessing them as they head down the road. And... Uh, I'm glad he was able to come by and be with us tonight. So we're going to sing a couple of verses of a good song. I'm going to get them all mic'd up, and we'll get to hear him preach in just a few minutes. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand once again. Turn to page 157, 157. We'll sing the first and last of Jesus Paid It All. Amen. Amen. I hear a Savior say, Thy strength and Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all and all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne, I died my soul to say my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Amen he paid it all that's correct all right Lord Thank you tonight, dear God, for another chance to hear Brother Weaver preach and be with us. I pray God you'll bless him as he preaches. I pray God you'll bless his wife. And Lord, you'll watch over her as she travels with him up and down the highways and byways of this country. Now, Lord, give him what he needs tonight, a fresh touch of heaven. Lord, help us to listen attentively. And Lord, bless the offering now. I pray, dear God, that it'll be sufficient for his need he may have right now. In thy name we pray. Amen.
that's good, Miss Ruth. Bless your heart for that. All right, Brother Weaver, you come and preach to us. So sit up straight, get our Bibles out while he's coming this way. You know, summertime's coming. It's going to be hot and humid and all that kind of stuff. And we try to keep it as comfortable as we can in here with the air conditioner. Of course, you never can't make anybody, everybody happy, okay? And uh, so if you, get, if you tend to get cold and when you come in, come toward the middle, okay? Come toward the middle. The vents are on the outside, okay? Come, to, Don't close those vents up, okay? And so if you get a little bit chilly or something like that, just find you a new place to sit. Amen? All right. Y'all got that? That's my message for the night. Let's pray and go home, Lord. <laughs> you didn't give the invitation. Oh, I got to give the invitation. All right. Preacher, it's good having you back. Amen. You preach to us, Doc. Okay. I am just so honored and thankful to be here tonight, and I want to take a moment to thank the church for your faithful, loving support financially and in prayers for us these years. And I sure did miss the camp meeting, but I have uh, already put it down for next year. Okay. So this other thing's on, okay. We're going to turn to the book of Luke chapter 6 tonight. I never cease to pray for the church, the pastor, his family, and the ministry here. And that's not an overstatement at all. That is no exaggeration. I pray for you faithfully. If it's not every day, it's close to it, real close to it. Let's read Luke chapter 6, verse number 6. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. Let us pray. I worship and adore you, O Lord Most High. I'm thankful to be one of your servants, the sheep of your pasture. I'm thankful to be among the saints of God tonight and one of your uh, precious uh, churches, Lord. And I pray now as we've read the word of God that it would go forth with witness and power of the Holy Ghost. Anoint our ears to be able to hear and receive the things of God tonight and our hearts to be tender to receive them and apply them to our lives. Bless this great church. Thank you for their faithful service to the Lord all these years. And I pray that you just bless their every need. And, and Lord, just have your way. Have the preeminence among us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're preaching tonight on this thought. Are you a withered member? Now, I'm making an analogy, and it's a very scriptural analogy tonight. I call your attention, you don't have to turn there, but 1 Corinthians 12 draws this analogy out that I'm using. In verses 15 and 16, at the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So in that scripture of Luke, I mean of 1 Corinthians 12, you have a very applicable 
uh, 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 thing there Amen. that the body yeah. is like, in, you know, to the physical members and you are a member, the body of Christ, yeah. the church. Amen. And so we're looking at this withered hand as being a member, a member that is withered, okay? Wow. A member, a good member, but withered or at least in a withering process. Maybe your prayer life has withered. Maybe your love life and the things of God has withered. Maybe your worship life, even though you're in church, you don't really worship like you used to. You go, but you don't worship. Right. Your worship life has withered. Your joy, which the pastor mentioned, your joy has withered. The beauty of God is no longer uh, manifested. That's withered, just like a rose withers. It's still a rose, but it's all withered up. And uh, it used to be beautiful, but the beauty is gone. It's just as much a rose as it ever was. It didn't cease to become a rose, but the beauty is not there. Maybe your praise life has withered. There was a time that you was easy to respond and the singing and the preaching and amen and hallelujah and, and just, I don't know, just put your heart into church. And then your giving life, has that withered? Your witness life, has that withered? You used to, be, you used to keep tracts in your pocket and yeah. was so, um, you know, ready to hand out a tract, to speak a word for the Lord, to invite someone to the house of God, to exhort them and, and so forth. But tonight, all that is just seeming to be in a withering process. Um, Mr. Webster in that old 1828 said, and I'm not going to read the entirety, but he says it means to shrivel, fade, decay, which we know that. And then he illustrates the grapes had withered on the vine. And then he goes on to say to lose, and I emphasize this one, to lose the freshness of youth. You know, God wants you to stay young spiritually. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. He does not want you to lose your vibrancy, your vigor. God give us spiritual youth. Yes. I don't want to get old and dried up. No, preacher. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. I still got the holy punch. Lost the freshness of youth, the cause of shrivel fade, lose vigor, lose bloom. Now this hand had a place in the body, was a part of the body, had a purpose in the body, but now had become a problem and now was powerless. Now I can identify with this very much tonight because I don't have a withered hand, but I have a withered leg. Uh, I do have a leg. Sometimes people, well, is it artificial? No, it's a real leg with a brace. And, but it is withered. And it's been that way for the biggest part of my life since I was 11 months old uh, because of polio. So now let me get to point number one. A withered member. First of all, there's something lacking in the body when the member is withered. Withered would indicate there was a time, there was a former wholeness. I was not born with a withered leg, but disease set in. It's not normal. It's not the way it's supposed to be. That's right. And it should not be accepted as normal. Come on. Yeah. Your withered spiritual condition should not be accepted as normal. That's right, preacher. Amen. Watchman Nee wrote a book years ago on the normal Christian life, and he really goes big on how it should be. And if you try to be like most Baptists, you're going to find yourself withering. Yes, preacher. Uh, let me see now. Former wholeness. And it's not normal, not born that way, should not be accepted. But what happened? Something happened to cause this withering condition. Well, in my case, now back when I was a, a baby, polio was pretty much epidemic back then. And I was a victim of polio. There was a lack of knowledge on how do you deal with it. 
And so because of a lack of knowledge, I became a victim of it. And so your withering condition tonight can go forward sadly because of a lack of knowledge. We need to get back to the Bible. This is the only knowledge. This is the knowledge that we desperately need to know the truth, to know the truth and uh, to be students. Everybody in here should be an avid student of the word of God. And maybe there was not proper care Maybe the guy with the withered hand, maybe he felt something as, you know, early on in the stages. It just doesn't feel like it used to, used to but he just ignores it and goes on. And uh, it's not as flexible. He's beginning to lose the grip on things. And, and, uh, but he just goes on like everything's fine. Sometimes we just act like everything's fine when it's not fine. Oh, that's good, we're good at playing the part. Yes and not living up to the part. And then uh, maybe he was just too proud to go to the doctor. Men have more of a problem going to doctors than women do. <laughs> you know, one time I remember when I pastor down in Florida, I, I decided I'd go to the doctor. I was sick. If, I mean, for me to say, okay, I'm going to the doctor, you know, buddy, it's big time. So I went to the doctor. I thought I was sick before I got there. But then he puts this popsicle stick in my mouth with no popsicle. And he asked me what's wrong with me. I mean, that's what I'm here for, you know. That's your job, not mine. <clears throat> and then I thought I was sick. I thought I was sick, but when I got to the desk to pay my bill, I knew I was sick then. <laughs> well, I knew I was sick then. And back when I pastored in Florida back in the 80s, I mean, $50 is still a, a, a bunch of money, but back then, buddy, mm, I mean, only made, let me see now, the church paid me, I think they got me up to $250 a, a week. That was $93 a week. And that was uh, no side jobs. Well, we did do some house cleaning. I should have never helped my wife back in those days. Now she's, she's got me still doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, um, just too proud to, to get to a doctor. When you feel things are not right, don't be too proud to get to Dr. Jesus, to get to the preacher, the man of God, say, hey, I need help. Something's not right. I don't feel, I'm losing my power to feel. <clears throat> now, you cannot build on feelings, but let me tell you something. Feelings are important. How can you have the joy of God and not have feelings? How can you have the peace of God and not have feeling? Yeah. How can you have the love of God shed abroad in your heart and have no feeling? Well, I knew the, the man, that the founder of the last church I pastored in Georgia, a good man, and his son was saved under my ministry there. I mean, once I took the pastorate, his son was my song leader, and he got saved during that, those years of my pastoring, and now he's a pastor, and uh, doing a great work, raised a tremendous good family, still got some kids at home, but good godly family. But his dad was the founding pastor. His dad had a lot of health issues, and one of them was diabetes, a very bad case of diabetes. And in process of time, he got uh, uh, neuropathy in, in at least one or both feet, I don't remember what. And some of you, you might be getting spiritual neuropathy. But anyway, he had neuropathy, he was out walking in his yard one day with hush puppy shoes on. He came back and he got in a recliner, kicked the chair back, and his wife, Willa Mae, uh, she's still a living, by the way, and uh, she screamed out, Bill! Under, coming out from his, the sole of his shoe was a nail, blood all over the bottom of, his, of the sole of that shoe. He didn't feel a thing. It didn't bother him a bit. And brother, it's a dangerous thing to lose your power to feel. Yes, it is, preacher. I'm trying to think of that great Southern Baptist president, George Truitt, yeah. He, he wrote a book on revival I read two or three times yes. years ago. He said, we'd get out there and pray. He said, I pray this all the time. God calls me to feel the way I ought to feel yes. about your work. And I, I took that prayer. I said, dear God, I want that. Yes. Don't let me become bland and spiritual neuropathy. I want to feel yes. the way I should feel. Yes, 
That's exactly right. Amen. And then maybe he went to the wrong doctor. I had a pastor friend down in Florida. He lives in North Georgia now, no longer pastoring him. But I was preaching revival down there in Davenport, which I have many years. His dad came to the services. His dad, I think, lived a little bit further down toward Tampa. He came in a wheelchair at least one or two nights. No legs, both legs severed. He too had a case of gangrene or well, in, in the lower part, and they had to, amputate. You may have read about him. You say, no, come on. Yeah, you may have read about him because it made national news. He went to the Tampa hospital. I'm not sure what hospital in Tampa, but he went to have that leg amputated. And guess what? They cut off the wrong one. So therefore they had to go back and cut the other one off. (laughs) So you can't go to the wrong doctor. And you know, when you don't feel right spiritually, you might wind up, if you're not careful, you're going to find one of the entertainment churches. One of these contemporary, I just want to feel something. Bop, bop, boom, boom, bop, 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 boom. And and you want entertainment instead of spiritual health. You you just want something to jack up your carnal feelings, Mm -hmm. but you've lost the power to feel spiritually. You no longer feel the presence of God no longer feel the power of God. You read this book and you no longer feel the book. Yes, preacher. So the wrong doctor, the wrong medicine, if you don't use, and, and there's only one Bible for English people, and that's this Bible, the King James. You know that, but I still preach it anyway. Yes. Sometimes something needs to be reiterated and just reinforced. And so um, something's lacking There's something lacking in my body. I can't do a lot of things that you do because something is lacking. I've been turned down from a lot of good jobs back in my younger years because they didn't say, they didn't say we can't hire you because you're you're handicapped, but they had some other reason. Well, before I leave this point, I refer to 1 Corinthians 12, 26. When one member suffers, the whole body suffers. It affects the whole body. You say, it's just between me and God. No, it's not. It's affecting your church. It's affecting your family. It's affecting your spouse. It's affecting your children. When one member suffers, the whole body suffers. I'm telling you what, it is a very serious thing. Come on, don't you minimize. Don't you brush it aside. It's a very serious thing for you to be in a withering process tonight. All shriveled up, dried up, look like you've been baptized in vinegar. Number two, it looks bad. It's a reproach to the whole body. When I was growing up, I remember one time, I was 12 or 13, mama... Daddy bought us passes to the YMCA for the summer. Now, remember, I was in a heathen home, and nothing wrong with swimming when you're, when you're a, a heathen, okay? And, uh, and, of course, if you're a Christian, there's nothing wrong with it, as long as you wear a bathing suit that reaches down to your ankles and stuff like that. And, but anyway, anyway, uh, I, I have two brothers. Of course, one's deceased now and, and a sister, And uh, Mama bought us passes for the YMCA. It was really hard to get me to go. I I, I can swim. I'm a good swimmer. I can't kick. I can't paddle my feet, but I can still do good. You know, not using my feet. Well, of course, I can kick the one foot. And uh, you saw that a minute ago, didn't you? And uh, but but anyway, it was hard to get me to go because you know just that. It just looks bad when you got one tiny leg and one regular size leg and you know, just that, it was just hard. It's just hard to go because it just doesn't look right. I was, and by the way, I can also climb trees. I've done that way on back and I can still climb one today when she gets after me. <laughs> I love you, baby doll. Yeah, I love you, baby doll. <laughs> it looks, it's a reproach to the body. It's a stigma. You know, you can study all the Gospels that bear this story in any commentary. 
You'll never find one time the man's name is given. So when we're talking Bible, without even turning to the passage, how do we make reference to this story? The guy with the withered hand. We don't need his name. He's got a stigma. The guy, the man with the withered hand. Yeah, 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 we know that. Yeah, we know him. I've, I've had some good pastoring years. I'm not in evangelism because failure in pastor. God bless my pastoring years. But I've had some failures there too. <laughs> One church I pastored was First Baptist Church of the Hornet's Nest. And uh, me, 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 me and four women tried to pastor that. <laughs> but God has blessed my pastoring years. But I took one church in Georgia and I was still a, a young guy and, and everything. And uh, this church had a history, a bad history. Well, I didn't check in all that. I just said, praise God, I get to go and pastor again. It had a stigma. I would go out. I believe in door knocking, amen. And I don't just believe in it, I do it. And I would knock on doors. And uh, I say, I'm the new pastor in town. The church had reconstituted since it did legally dissolved and then, you know, re, reconvened, reconstituted. They had a new name. I'm the new pastor in town at Victory Baptist Church. You know, where's that? You know, the church over there by the ball field. Oh, that church, black. My goodness. I, I wouldn't even want to tell you some of the stuff that happened in that church in years past. It used to be a thriving church but anyway, you got a bad stigma. It looks bad. It really looks bad for a member not to be active. Sure does. They're just hanging around, but not to be active, not to function, not to serve. Are you serving God tonight? Are you serving the church tonight? Is it right to serve the church? Yes. yes. Phoebe was a servant of the church. Yes. It looks bad not to be able to be relied on. So, here's a book. Yep. Yep. None of my business. Here's a book. My body has convened together. We've decided, you know, that book is in the wrong place. We need to have it moved back to where it used to be. We all, we all agree, the whole membership, we agree. I'll tell you what, brethren... Brother Hand, he needs to be more involved. We're going to give him a chance, okay? We're going to give him a chance to, to be a part of us like he used to be. Brother Hand, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm talking to you, right? Uh, you see that book? Oh, I forgot, you don't have eyes. But uh, you know the book we were talking about? Well, we, we've decided it needs to be moved. You remember that? Yep, 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 you was there. And we want it moved from right there over to there. And we decided we'd like for you to do it. Okay, okay. Praise God. He's going to do it. So here we go. Brother Hand, Brother Hand, Brother Hand. Oh, whoops. Well, Brother Lefty, it's up to you again. You just can't depend on him. You cannot depend on Brother Hand because he's withered. Brother Lefty has to do twice the work, more than twice the work, because of a withered member. Wow. Not to be active, relied upon, and then what hand is it that we're reading about? The right hand. What hand in Galatians does that refer to? The right hand of fellowship. Do you realize how important fellowship is? Don't you ever minimize the importance of fellowship one with another. You know, we really need each other. Yes, we do. Amen. God, one of the, maybe the, uh, the, the uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but a key word, that's the word I'm trying to think, key word in the book of Acts is the word together. Together, they go to pray together, they work together, they worship together. God is a God of together. Yes, he is. Amen. God wants us to be together. Yes. Heaven will not have compartments. We'll all be together yes. in heaven. That's good. 
Amen. Amen. And God wants us to have, hey, gather together in his holy name. He said, we're two or three, gather together in my name. I will be there. He said, I'm gonna show up. It don't take a bunch of you. Just get together. And he said, I'm gonna be there. The right hand of fellowship, it looks bad when you begin backing off from your fellowship. Oh, maybe you come to church. You used to come early. Now you come dragging in. I got a song for you. When the saints come dragging in. And, and you leave during invitation. You don't come to any particular gatherings of fellowship. You, you just always, you just sort of, well, I don't, you know, I go to church, but that's about it. You used to shake hands. You used to welcome each other. Does it, is it right to greet one another? I know the rest of that with the holy kids, but I'm not going to try to preach that right now. I'll let you preach take care of that part of it. And, uh, but at least that right hand of fellowship, greeting one another. You ought to make even your regular members feel welcome. That's right. Quit being a stuck up yeah. somebody. Hey, Amen. Quit being a spiritual recluse. Yeah. Say, I'm going to be, not just go to church, I'm going to be a part of my church. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make my preacher feel welcome. I'm not going to wait on him to shake my hand. I'm going to go shake his hand. There you go. Mm, I feel a mean streak hitting me. Yeah. And of course, make visitors feel welcome. Yes, sir. I mean, make them feel welcome. Okay, so far we've covered something lacking in the body, the looks of the body, and now it limits the body on what it can do. So I'll have to use my guitar for this illustration. It limits the body. It doesn't matter how much I know, and I don't claim to know a lot, about music, of the chords, the rhythm, the notation. It doesn't matter how much I know about this instrument. It doesn't matter how zealous I am. I want to play the guitar. I'm going to do it. Let me just try it with a withered hand. I think I'll play a little bit of Amazing Grace. Don't you, I mean, don't y'all love it? Wow. Aren't you getting something out of this? I mean, man, it ought to bless your heart. Amazing Grace always blesses your heart. You look like you're pretty bored with my music. Well, I got one hand that's very active, but he can't do it by himself. It takes both hands. It limits the body. It doesn't matter how much I want to play it, how much I know about it, and all that. There's got to be, there's got to be every member, at least these two members involved. My fingers, all you fingers cooperate now. So it limits the body. You may have desire, talent, knowledge, skill. The fact is it cripples one. You know, on my car out there, I've got a handicap tag. Now they think, some think I'm handicapped up here and maybe so, but but anyway, I've got, you know, hey, you ought to see my muscles, man. I'm telling you what, they'll knock your eyeballs out. I mean, wow. And uh, I can run real fast when she gets after me. And, and I mean, you know, but, but still, I qualify for a handicap tag because of one member. One member. I wonder if some churches might need to put a handicap tag on the front door of their church. One member can handicap the whole church. So it cripples the body and... Um, It puts more work on the other members as I illustrated earlier. It hinders, it slows down and it limits in the service where you can go. Like I say, I've tried to get, I I remember one of my first jobs, I was still a teenager and I got a a job at a a hamburger joint, Hardee's back then. Man, you're talking about flipping hamburgers, buddy. I can do three, four hamburgers at one time. Mm Mm-hmm. And hey, back then we didn't have them registers that had pictures of the hamburgers and the drinks on it. I could do it in my head. And with the taxes and everything, 
I mean, I could run the register just like that, but I could also do it in my head. Tell them that's going to be five dollars and so much cents. Back then, you could feed about a whole family for five dollars. And um, but anyway, then I went to a, a place in Rock Hill, which I, I lived there then. That's where I was born and raised. A place called Star Paper Tube. My uh, friend and his dad helped me get on there, and where we made these paper tubes, obviously, and we're doing real good. Doing real good worked. All night and good heavy work, but that's all right. I'm not allergic to work. I can lay down and sleep by any time. And um, <laughs> but good heavy work. Well, guess what? My friend got another job at Westinghouse in Charlotte. I was making barely above minimum wage, which back then was like a dollar sixty-five an hour. My friend, my best friend, starting off at three fifty an hour. Well, that's fine. I went to apply. Mm-mm, no, no, no. They can't take a cripple. Now they didn't say that. They can't. They got to be politically correct, you know. I went to that tire place up there. I can't remember the name of it now, but try to get a job. These big paying jobs. No, I'd be a liability. I'd be a, yeah, general tire. I'd be a liability. And so it limits where you can go, what you can do, how much you can do, and how much speed you can do it, do it with. Yeah. Well, my next point is it becomes a liability. The withered member used to be a blessing, now is a liability. You should pray to God tonight, Lord, make me a blessing to my church. Make me a blessing to you. I pray this, Lord, make me a blessing to you. Yeah. Make me a blessing, bless me, this is why I put it, Lord, bless me that I might bless you. Bless me that I might bless your church, your people. Yes. I want to be a blessing. I don't want to live just to be living. I don't want preachers to be preaching. I want to be a blessing. Yes. And so it's good to pray for a blessing with that uh, desire. What used to be a blessing has now become a burden. Now... I have to illustrate further. I cannot just jump about. I carry crutches everywhere I go because once I take this brace off, I I mean I could hobble around, sometimes holding on to furniture, getting around. But I carry crutches uh, to get around, and um, I don't just get up in the morning run straight to the coffee pot. I try to get my wife to do it. I go cut it on. I got to get this thing going. Amen. And because um, there's one of my members that needs special attention. That's right. Special attention. It has to be given special treatment. Have to take time to clothe it, put the brace on, and all that before I can start getting around. At least in a normal way. It's. It, but guess what? Guess what? I don't want it amputated. I don't want it amputated. No church wants to amputate a withered member. That's exactly right. So we're not trying to say, hey, just leave. No, no, no. We don't want you out. We want you restored. Yes. So anyway, I'll get to that in a moment. Now this has to be ministered to. Special care. It's always got to have special support. Some people never come to church if you don't have to call them two or three times a week. Are you okay? You okay? Uh, there, there are some low maintenance members and there are some high maintenance members. Yeah. This, this uh, member has to be placed. I'm going to sit down again to illustrate. Now, I have to drive my car left footed, so I drive on the left side of the road. The law ought to understand that. Not, but I drive left footed. Because I cannot, I cannot move this leg. I cannot move it on its own ability. There's nothing there. I can't even put my foot up and down. I couldn't walk through a gas pedal. And, and there have been times, you know, even notice I had to pick it up and put it out there then. And uh, maybe I'd be in a, a, a pew somewhere or a close setting somewhere. And here comes a little kid all of a sudden in a hurry, come flying through. I can jerk that leg out of the way, but they fall over that leg because I can't get it out of the way. It won't move. It has to have others to come in and move it. And so it's a liability. I, it's hurt me and it's hurt others. Wow. It can hurt the whole body. 
<clears throat> there was one time I fell three times in the same week. I, I slide down so easy. I, it's dangerous for me to walk on a wet floor. And, and, but anyway, that's beside the point. And um, let me see now. So it, it, it causes accidents. At, and I'm, I've already covered the power to feel. And one more thing before I go to my last point. This leg tends to be cold even when the rest of the body is, you know, normal temperature. Oh, It'll get cold so easy, summer or winter. Even though I go to Alaska every August for some 15 years, buddy, I have to really take, be careful about this leg. I go in the summertime. Of course, it's still pretty nippy in the summertime. But, um, but I can't live up there. It, it, this leg will get frostbit in a hurry. And so it's always cold and you can tell when a member is in a withering condition because they're always cold. They're Come cold. On, Coldness is set in. Woo. You've lost the fire. Oh, my. You've lost the passion. Woo. And um, anyway, let me go to my last point. Oh, what a good point. <clears throat> the Lord of restoration the Lord was there. So uh, here we have this setting I read to you <clears throat> in the outset. And it's a, a Sabbath, one of the Sabbaths. And Jesus is there. This man with the right, with a withered hand was there. And scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day. They're always trying to find fault. Lost church members are always looking for fault Always critical. And, um, the, but Jesus knew their thoughts, and he knows yours too, by the way. Yes, he does. And said to the man which had the withered hand, <clears throat> I'm going to get to this process in just a moment. Um, and you know, it's, it's such a sad thing at the last of this miracle. It says these scribes and Pharisees were all filled with madness. They were so angry because somebody got help. Yeah. That's the indication of a lost church member. Yeah. Brother, if, if you can't rejoice over somebody getting right with God, you are either lost or so far backslid you can't tell the difference. But here's the process on how to get your withered condition cured. Three stages in verse eight. The first thing, rise up. There's got to be a response. God is not going to come and twist your arm and say, okay, you're going to get right. No. There's got to be your response. That's right, preacher. Yes. Lost people have to respond. Yeah. Whosoever will may come, may come. Uh, whosoever will sh and call upon the name of the Lord. But it's a whosoever will in terms of lost people. Well, it's a whosoever will in terms of withered members. So whosoever will, will you rise up? It's either I will or I won't. You can stay in your condition or you can respond. That's right. Amen. Oh, that's and you know, this is a principle all through the Bible, this rise up principle. The four leprous men at the gate of Samaria, they said, we, we can't just sit here till we die. We can't go back into the city where they're already dying and famine, or we can't cast, but they said, we're not going to just sit and do nothing. We're going to rise up. Yeah. And that's what they did. And then the crippled man by the pool of Bethesda, who had laid on his couch for 39 years, Jesus said, rise up, take up thy bed and walk. You think he would have got healed if he had said, I just believe you can heal me if I just lay here. No, he had to rise up. He had to rise up. And on and on, you see that principle in the Bible. Rise up, rise up, respond. Yes, preacher. That's good. That's good. The next stage of this restoring process is stand forth. Stand forth. Not only rise up, but now don't try to sneak around and get right with God. Come forth publicly. Don't be too proud. Stand forth. Come on down here. Come on down. Quit living a two-fold life. I'm withered and I'm going to be honest and open about it. I'm going to make it public tonight. Amen. And then the last thing was 
stretch forth thy hand. The, now, now, did Jesus say which hand to stretch forth? No, he didn't. The man could have said, okay, I'll just stretch forth. Yeah, here's my hand. He knew what the Lord meant. Now, here's my hand. I want to show God your good hand, don't you? You want to show the church your good hand. We want to keep the withered hand covered up. The man would have never got healed right. if he had stretched forth the wrong hand. He had to pull out that part that he was ashamed of, withered, repulsive. And not, some people, I mean, people have these kind of problems, and I'm not trying to, I'm like, I got a withered leg, but that's just, you know, you had to pull out that part that you're not really proud of, okay? Here it is. He's just, you don't just pull it out and sort of, no, you stretch it forth. You become open and transparent before everybody. And I can just see as the man pulls out that withered hand yeah. and begins right, stretching it forth, it opens up. As it, and, and it was restored to what degree? To what degree? Look at it, it tells you. As whole as the other, in verse 10, whole as the other. No probation, no suspicion, it was restored whole as the other. Hey, you can get right. You can. You can. David got right and said, Lord, restore unto me the joy. You can't get it restored if you never had it. Maybe you've never had the joy of his salvation. But anyway, God is a God of restoration. He restoreth my soul. Let us stand and get our music ready. I want your power demonstrated. I want the heavens opened over this house tonight. I want there to be honesty and transparency in this church tonight. Yes. I pray, Lord, that all facade and hypocrisy would be removed tonight. Yes. I pray heaven's searchlight would be turned on, shining yes. down yes. into this assembly. Yes. And I pray, Lord, there'd be obedience tonight yes. as we saw illustrated in this account of the withered man with the withered hand. Now bless our music, bless this altar, and bless these dear saints. And if there's one lost soul, that they would come to know the Lord tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Mind the Lord. church member. Wow. Just wither away slowly. Wow. Doesn't have to be that way. It'll affect your marriage. You know, some marriages just wither away. Affect your children. Affect your schoolwork, it'll affect your job, relationships. Have thine own way, Lord. Transparency. It's me, God. It's me. I don't feel it like I used to. You can. has never changed never will change joy of being restored. Great day. Nothing like it. Nothing like it.
man with a withered hand, he let Jesus have his way. Make it whole again. Boy, preacher, that's good stuff. <laughs> well, praise God. Wasn't that wonderful? I'm telling you, that was some good stuff tonight, wasn't it? I'm up here like a little kid in kindergarten saying, oh, boy. And I'm thinking, of course, you think these things, and the Lord has to remind you. I'm thinking, well, I wish the whole church was here. Don't you? you wish the whole church was here. But then you say, well, Lord, I'm here. It's for me. It's for those that are here. And those who are not here, that's, they missed it. They missed it. And here's the thing about it. When, you, when you're not withered, you take a message like this and say, Lord, I don't want to get withered. So this can be a corrective and a preventive message. I don't want to get with her. And uh, you can bloom all the time if you want to. You don't have to wither away. You can bloom till the day you die. You know that? Miss Kathy Elkins was a good illustration that, wasn't she? She just kept on blooming till she went to glory. Amen? So you don't have to wither away as a child of God. You sure can't. Thank you, preacher. That was just a very marvelous and needed message. I appreciate it so much. It helped me. And it helped our church. Amen. So, uh, all right. Well, you're heading on. Where are you headed from here? You know, you just head. I'm going to be in prison tomorrow night. Going to be in prison. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying to make up some of my time. Okay. Make up. I'm going to be in prison. Lance Neal. Oh, okay. All right. Over to Brother Lance. I've been gone about three weeks, so we're heading home on Tuesday. Oh, well, you be careful on the road, okay? If you break down anywhere, uh, call Robbie. He'll help you. Okay. And he'll come get you in his big 18 wheeler, okay? All right. It's been a good night, had been a good day, and uh, we had some visitors this morning. That couple going out said it felt good to be in church today, to be in church, and I said we appreciate you coming. And uh, I'll, uh, they still live in the Charleston area. They're going to be moving out here, and so uh, I've written them a letter. I always write folks a letter and mail it to them, and so that's a good thing. Amen. It's good. Isn't that good? All right, we're going to close in prayer. And preacher, if you don't, if you don't mind, you can step back under for you, you and your wife. And uh, let folks speak to you on the way out. And uh, just hop on back there, okay? Amen. It's, amen. He's limping away. One of these days he won't limp. How about that? He'll run in full gear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? I tell you what, he's got a sweet wife too. Amen, amen. Father, we sure thank you for what you've done today in both services. Lord, especially tonight, Lord, I do pray that you'll, you'll take every message we hear, Lord, especially those we've heard today, and Lord, help us to apply them to our heart. We thank you, Lord, that we've been justified through your precious blood. And though we're uh, not holy in this old world, we don't live as righteous as we should, I'm so thankful, Father, that when you see us through the blood, we're perfect. One of the today's, God, we will be perfect. But until then, help us, dear God, to, to uh, keep it fresh, to stay in the Word of God, to stay in our prayer chambers, to stay in church, so we can, Lord, just keep living for Thee. Watch over us now as we head our separate ways. Help us be back on Wednesday, the appointed time. Lord, I pray you'll bless Brother Weaver and his wife as they travel and preach all over this country. May never need they have. In thy name we pray. Amen.